Hi, this is Zach Brooks with World Transplant Athletes. Tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, everywhere, online. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. As a two-time kidney transplant recipient and frequent participant at local, national, and world transplant games, I always wonder how do other recipients take care of their health and prepare for competitions? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is to learn from the most inspiring athletes in the world. Today, I have Simon Elmore from the United Kingdom. Simon, welcome to the show. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, this is really exciting. So a couple of warm-up questions before we get to your tips. So the first uh, question, which transplant did you have? Looks like, oh, you there? Yeah, you froze. Yeah, so did you. So that's okay. We'll just uh, continue. So uh, which, uh, which um, transplant did you have? I had a kidney transplant. Excellent. Okay. Uh, warm up question number two. If you were to summarize your transplant journey in one word, what would it be? An amazing journey that would never change. Okay. Number three, warm up question. Hopefully this is helping you getting ready for your tips that you're coming really quickly here. What was your first exercise post transplant? My first exercise was four days after the transplant and it was starting to walk again and doing four, uh, three and a half miles round, sorry, four and a half miles round Nottingham City Hospital with a drip stand. Uh, talking to as many people as I could because I was so excited that I got my kidney and I was just uh, so hyperactive, couldn't sleep because I got insomnia anyway, so it's walk and talk. <laughs> wow, so let me let me get this picture right. So you have your, your stand yep. shuffling around the hospital four miles, so over five, you know, six kilometers something, yeah. four days after the transplant. Yep, loved it. I what? was just excited. What, what made you so motivated? Because that's just crazy. I mean, I walked a hundred steps and I was so happy, but like, what made you so motivated to walk that much? Well, I, I, the, the day I got the phone call, I made a promise, um, three promises. I was gonna get healthy and fit. I was gonna get to the British Transplant Games in Newcastle that year, 2015 in the summer, which was six months and six days after my transplant. And I was also going to get to Argentina the following month, seven months after my transplant, get a gold medal and made sure my, the biggest promise was I was going to meet my donor family the following year and present that family with my medal. Excellent. So which activities and sports do you regularly participate in, Simon? Now I participate in pretty much every sport that's going apart from swimming, cycling and long distance there's far too much effort for me that is i'm too old <laughs> <laughs> no worries no worries so let's get right to your tips and i'm going to read your tips first of all and then let's go back to the top so simon it's for everyone out there simon uh, sent me his tips a few weeks ago so thanks again for that simon and on the show i'm asking transplant athletes everywhere to send me five of their top tips on helping anyone who just had a transplant or someone like simon who's participated in lots of different uh, activity. So tip number one from Simon is small steps equal massive goals. Step two, tip two, looking at doing activities you might enjoy, even if you haven't ever done them before. Tip three, try not to push yourself too hard and overexert. Tip four, drink plenty of fluids, which Simon is demonstrating right now. And tip five is live, live life, do because you can. So let's go right back to the top. So your first tip, Simon, is small steps, equal massive goals. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, after my transplant, I looked at what sports I could do and what I knew my consultant would let me do. <laughs> and I planned to try and reach my goals by doing sports that I'd never done before. So I thought, you know what, let's 
let's look at what my ultimate goal is and how we can break it down and how I can get there by doing small things slowly. Mm -hmm. So doing the steps in the hospital were, were groundbreaking for me to get to a level of, I can do this. It, it was the first goal, I can do this, body's feeling good. And I wasn't overexerting. That was my worry that I was going to do too much and it was going to push me back. So first part was get out of the hospital, uh, get involved in sports that I could do. So archery, table tennis, temping bowling, lawn bowls, nice, steady sports that were okay to do. Mm. And I thought, well, let's do this. Let's, let's start the process at, at a different angle and do sports I've not done before. Yeah. And really just set myself up for really achieving that next level. And uh, it was so exciting. You know, that was it. Yeah. it was so exciting. Yeah, no, I remember after my second transplant in particular, my first goal was to walk 100 steps in the hospital. And the next day it was like 125. So I really, uh, I respond very much to the small steps equal massive goals. So thanks for that tip. Yeah. Tip number two, look at doing activities you might enjoy, even if you haven't done them before. Why is that so important for you? Well, the, the sports I did were, my challenge was the British Transplant Games. And I looked at, I've been following the games for uh, only six months, to be fair, and thought, I can do these. Well, I can have a go at these sports, and hopefully I'll, I'll be good at them. That, that's the plan. And I thought, you know what, Let, let's give it a go. Never, never done temping bowling properly, never done archery at all. Mm. Table tennis was, woo, well, I had a bat at school. I thought, you know what, let's give it a go. Have a try, have some fun and learn a new sport that, you know, I, I might take it up and might not, but if it's fun, let's give it a go. And it was amazing. You know, it, I, I took to it. It was fun, exciting. And I got good at it. And with the extra effort, I was able to compete in them, uh, the British Games. And that was that was phase one. That was brilliant. You know, it was just such an, an honor and a privilege to be able to get to the Games and uh, do something. Yeah, skills follow passion often, oftentimes. So your third tip you have here is try not to push too hard and overexert. So yes. so far it sounds like just go out there and do everything. So you're now telling people, be careful. Like, well, tell, us, tell us about this a little bit more. The, the sports you do have got to be in a place that you are. It's like with temping bowling. Temping bowling doesn't seem that much exertion, but... It's still a heavy ball. You've got to take it easy. You can't just go out there like you may have done years ago and go, I'm going bowling mm. and bowl as much as you can. It's, it's going, you know what? I'm going to go bowling. I'm going to have fun. That's the priority. I'm going to have fun doing it. Mm. And if I can increase that effort, great. But don't do too much that is going to put you back. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel like it, it's too much pressure now. You've gone to that point and it, 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 you're frustrated. The mm -hmm. important thing is, if you're not enjoying it, if you're not having fun doing it, then you're going to go one step back. And mm -hmm. it's hard to take that step forward again because you've had that knockback. So just take it easy, mm -hmm. take it steady, and learn what your body can do, which is a hard thing to say because people just want to, off we go. Yeah. I can do everything because I could do it. Your body's changed. Take it steady and understand what your body is telling you because it will yeah. tell you. Yeah, I can totally relate to that because after my second transplant, three weeks after I was in the gym on an elliptical machine and I was probably on a lot of steroids and I felt <laughs> all this energy and I did a lot more than I maybe should have. One week later, I was back in the hospital for three days. And so I really respond to really taking it easy, especially those first six months. If you're out there and you're a lifetime athlete, you know, like Simon said, your body changes. So that is a really important tip. Uh, tip four, and you're modeling that behavior today is drink plenty of fluids. So what do you mean by that? And how much, how much fluids do you mean? As I well, do. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is with with fluid, when you've had a transplant, especially for kidneys, you know, I, I can relate to kidneys more so than anything. Your body has to have more fluid going into it so the kidney can function, so the kidney can work hard, but it needs that fluid mm. to keep the balance right. And even after a transplant, you should be drinking between two and four liters a day uh, on, on, a, on a normal cycle. That's, that's a steady, steady amount. Mm. 
-hmm. However, if you are doing sport or activities, your body is dehydrating so much quicker because your kidney is working and you need to keep it topped up and overdo it slightly. It's better to overdo it slightly than not drink enough and really your, your kidney can suffer. So I would drink, I mean, I've got my cup. Yeah, so is, how, much is, how much is that right there you have in that, your hand? That's 300 mil. So, so that, I would normally drink cups of tea all day long and that to, would be my to bonus. Two liters, you need to drink uh, seven of those. Yeah. That's the minimum. And if you're doing sports, you're drinking 10, 15, it sounds like daily of those more or less this size cup of tea. Okay. Yep. Or water. Okay. Thank and, you. For that. And the thing is with that, the, the, the importance is that you, you, your mindset is, oh, it seems a lot. But if you stagger it out, you get used to it. It's like when you take your meds, mm -hmm. you take your meds, just have a bit more, bit more fluid when you're taking your meds. And it just happens. You know, you get into a routine. It just because, yeah, absolutely. So your final uh, tip here sounds like a life philosophy. Live life, do because you can. So share with people what you mean by that. Absolutely. I mean, you've had an amazing journey so far. It's been up and down. It's been tough. It's been rough. And you've now got a, a transplant. The world is open. The doors are open and you've got so much opportunity to go and live life and, and have, have that excitement again that you, you've been missing. And for me, I love sport. I love sport coaching kids, coaching adults, supporting everybody. And I wake up every day with a smile because I shouldn't be here. And I understand that I shouldn't be here. So I want to make the most of every day. And my, that philosophy is with me for life. Mm -hmm. Live life do because you can. Many people have missed out on the opportunity to do what you're, you're about to do or what you are doing. And I just, I, you know, I makes me well up a lot of the time where I, I can do so much and people can't. And I want to inspire as many people as I can because this is such a gift. And without that gift, I wouldn't be able to do half the things I can now. And I want to make the most of it. And hopefully you can too. That's the whole purpose of the transplant is to live it and love it. Thank you so much. Simon, so uh, thanks for taking the time to be on the show today. For everyone out there, you can log on to Facebook forward slash World Transplant Athletes Weekly to uh, follow another athlete who's going to share their tips and tricks. So World Trans Transplant Athletes is tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, everywhere, and online. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. Simon, thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye.